Did you know that there's this thing in your water heater called an anode rod? And that that anode rod is the reason why so many water heaters fail after only 10 or 12 years, forcing the homeowners to replace the water heater after such a short time. And that's a big investment. Hi, I'm Allison Bales. Today, let's talk about the anode rod. First of all, the full name is sacrificial anode rod because it sacrifices itself. It depletes over time. There are chemical reactions happening in the tank of your water heater that would otherwise attack the steel tank, but instead they attack the sacrificial anode rod and make the water heater last longer if as long as that anode rod lasts in the tank. So that's why you have to check it. If you check it regularly and replace it when necessary, your water heater can last decades, not just years, not 10 years, not 12 years, but decades, 50 years or more, it can last. Well, the first thing to know is that your water heater probably has an anode rod. Most homes have storage water heaters with a tank. Most storage water heaters have a steel tank, a glass lined steel tank. It's got a glass lining on the inside to protect the steel because steel corrodes and turns into iron. Um, so you need to try to save that. The glass lining can only do so much. The anode rod does the bulk of the work to protect that tank from corrosion. And the anode rod will last um, as long as it can, and that depends on the water quality. If you have really hard water, that anode rod will deplete faster. If you use a water softener, that anode rod can deplete faster because you're putting ions into the water. If you have certain types of bacteria in your tank, they can create some electrical activity which can cause the anode rod to deplete faster. So sometimes the anode rod will last only two or three years, depending on your water quality. Other times it can last more than 10 years. It just depends on your water quality. So you have to check it and you have to check it early. I have a heat pump water heater, which is more expensive than a regular water heater. So I want to make sure that this thing can last as long as possible. I do not want the, the tank corroding to end this life early. I want this thing to last as long as possible. So this weekend I checked the anode rod and let's see what happened. All right. Today is heat pump water heater anode rod checking day. I missed that opportunity when I cleaned the coil recently, but I'm gonna open it up again today. I've got the tool I need now, the one and one sixteenth inch socket, and I am all ready. But before we open the top and get in there, there's a couple of things we have to do first. One, turn the power off. I've done that. I, um, I've got the disconnect disconnected, so the water heater has no power right now. Second, I close the valve that lets cold water go into the water heater. Now I am draining a little bit of water out of the water heater at the bottom. It's a good idea to flush a little bit out of the bottom every once in a while anyway to remove any sediment that might have collected down there. Because if you have the kind of water that causes your anode rod to fall apart, you will end up with a lot of sediment in the bottom. So um, I've drained a little bit here as you can see and there is no sediment in it. That's a good sign. I'm hoping that means that the anode rod will be in good shape. So let's take a look. All right, I've got it open. I've got everything ready and I am ready to see if I can crack that nut without having to get a cheater bar on here to get extra torque. Let's see. Okay, this is really hard. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I need a cheater pipe. Around and around, and around we go. 
interesting. I got the uh, anode rod all the way loosened. And then my condensate line is draining, not because of condensate, but because I had a big explosion here because there was still pressure in there. I released the pressure though, so I'm not sure why this happened. Let's talk about that accidental fountain that I created in my water heater the other day when I was checking the anode rod now. So I've talked with Larry Weingarten, one of my plumbing mentors. He is a genius with plumbing stuff. He has worked on thousands of, of water heaters and really knows the stuff. He told me he has made pretty much every mistake you can make with a water heater, including this one with the accidental fountain. So I should not have had pressure in that tank, but I did have pressure. That's why when I got the anode rod loosened, the water spurted out. But um, where did the pressure come from? Because I closed the supply line valve and I drained pressure. I drained it from, I drained water from the bottom. I drained water from a hot water tap here in the basement. I shouldn't have had any pressure in that tank. So a couple things could have, could have happened. One, that valve on the supply line could have been bad. Um, or two, there could be some crossover in the, the plumbing system from the cold side to the hot side. The hot side was turned off, right? But I did not close the valve from on the outlet of the water heater. And so water could come back into the water heater through the hot water side. Next time I'll know, close the outlet side as well, relieve the pressure, close the, both valves, and then you should be fine. I did not close this valve, so either that supply line valve is bad or water's coming back in here from some kind of crossover, maybe a shower mixing valve. Now with the top off and the anode rod broken free, I can see what it looks like. This is six, almost six years of use, and you can see a lot of pock marks in there. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of places where the anode rod has been eaten away and that's why they call them sacrificial anode rods so with uh with what you see here there's still a lot left on this so this thing can go quite a bit longer i believe um and the worst of it actually seems to be at the top as you can see, as I go down there, there's not as much damage on this thing. Not as much sacrifice, I should say. Here is a picture that Larry Weingarten sent me of two anode rods. One is brand new, and one is just now ready for replacement. The brand new one, of course, is the thick one on the bottom. The one that's ready for replacement now is the one that has some material left in the middle, but about six inches on each end of the, the anode rod. It's completely worn all the way down to the center wire, and that means that it is ready for replacement. Okay, let's finish this up now. I've got everything working. It's been three days since I, I had my accidental fountain. I checked the anode rod. The anode rod shows evidence of pitting, uh, so there's definitely some depletion happening there, but there is plenty of material left on that rod. It can last a, a lot longer. It's been 5.7 years, nearly six years since I got this thing going, and there's still a lot of material left. I probably uh, can leave it for another four years at least, and and then check the, the rod again, and, and maybe even another four years after that probably, because there's there's still a lot of material left on that rod. We have good water here in DeKalb County, Georgia, where I am, and that's uh, the water quality, as I mentioned, is one of the main factors in determining how much depletion you have on the on the anode rod and how often it will wear out completely and need to be replaced. So I'm still on my first rod, almost six years into using this water heater. I plan to make sure that there, there will always be a functioning anode rod in there, so I don't lose my water heater uh, for that per, that reason. Now, once I determine that, I, I put the anode rod back in. I wrap Teflon tape around the thread, six 
six wraps of Teflon taper on the threads. I put it back in. I tightened it up again in, in the water heater. There was no leak once I got the water going. I also did one other thing, as you can see with my multimeter here, I tested for continuity between the anode rod and the tank. I, I made sure that there was close to zero resistance between those two, which means that there was continuity, electrical continuity, because this thing works by um, electrical activity. So I want to make sure that these things are connected electrically, and they are. So you can't have a cathode and an anode that aren't connected electrically. If you have an open circuit, then that's not going to work. So I, connect, I, I checked. That works. I put it all back together. It's been working fine for three days. Um, I am getting hot water and the heat pump part is working just fine. Everything is great here. So make sure that you follow the protocols for checking an anode rod when it's time to do this. Check them regularly, whatever your schedule is uh, dictated by the water quality and make sure you replace those anode rods and your water heater can last a long time. So when is the last time you checked your anode rod? Have you ever checked your anode rod? Have you heard of an anode rod before this video? All right, one thing I, I really need to cover here is doing it yourself carries some risk. Uh, as you saw, things can happen that you don't expect. Are you prepared? Do you have the, the resources to deal with that? If you have to call in a, a, a plumber, that's going to add a lot of cost. It might be better for you if you're not comfortable doing this, calling in a, a licensed plumber from the beginning to do that, um, that check of the anode rod. As you also saw, it takes a lot of torque, a lot of force to crack that nut the first time that it, um, it comes out after it's uh, straight from the factory. This was the first time I checked my anode rod and I had to use a big cheater bar on my, my wrench to get that thing broken free and so I could pull it out. Um, also, uh, electricity. Be careful with electricity and know what you're doing. So DIY is great if you have the tools and the skills and you have a, uh, a plan. And, um, and also, <laughs> one, one thing, I, I say this every time I do plumbing stuff and something like that happens, don't start plumbing jobs in, in the afternoon. Start plumbing jobs in the morning if you can when you're doing DIY plumbing work. Start in the morning because things happen and if, uh, if you have to keep the water off or the hot water, if you don't have hot water overnight or for a couple of days, that can create some tension in the family. So start in the morning, have a clear plan and be ready to go in the morning so that you can knock it out quickly.